Hey guys, today we're gonna cover the outliner editor type. Quick reminder, this lesson is from our complete intro to Blender course that we're offering for free for a limited time on YouTube. If you're new here, I'd recommend starting at the beginning of the course. I've added a link in the description. All right, go ahead and open up Blender and let's jump right in. To begin this lesson, be sure to start a new file. I've already done so, but if you haven't, go to a file and pick the option for new general and that will open a new file. You don't need to save the one you've been working on. And in the new file, let's discuss the outliner. That's the editor type or the panel we see in the upper right corner here. And it'll say scene collection, then collection, and then a handful of things there. So let's discuss the outliner and start to think about how we can use it to our advantage in Blender. So the first thing we see is scene collection. A scene collection is really just the folder of all of the things that you have in the entire scene. So you can think of that as similar to your whole Blender file. Then beneath that, you have a sub collection. By default, it's just called collection. And you can see because this is indented in, this collection is inside of this scene collection. And these are shown like file boxes. You could also think of them as folders. So this is like a subfolder. This collection folder then, within it, it defaults to having three object types. So you have the camera object, that's this one over here. You have the cube mesh object, that's the default cube here. And you have the light object, that's this little icon here. Now these orange icons are the object icons. And then these green icons have to do with the object data for each object. Now, I don't expect you to understand what the difference between the object and the object data are just yet. We'll definitely cover that here across these upcoming lessons. The last thing to note for now about this outliner panel is that to the right, we have some different ways of controlling visibility. So if you uncheck the entire collection, this will disable this entire collection, which makes it invisible. Now, if you check that back on, just to the right, you can click on the eyeball icon to hide it in the viewport. Now, the disabling the entire collection versus hiding, it might be hard for you to figure out what would be the difference between the two, but for the most part, you're mainly gonna be thinking about using the eyeball icon if you need to hide something. And you would hide things mainly so that you could more easily work with a larger, more complicated scene in Blender. You might need to hide certain things to get them out of your way and then click on the eyeball icon again to turn them back on. Now, if you wanna hide individual objects, then you can find next to, for example, cube, you can click on the eyeball icon there. Then you've only hidden the cube while keeping the camera and the light turned on. You can go ahead and click on that eyeball icon again to turn it on. Now, the camera icon to the right, this has to do with whether or not the object will be visible in the final rendering. Now, when it comes to a mesh object like the cube, if you click on the camera icon, nothing will change here in the viewport because you still have that eyeball icon turned on. You can see the cube here, but later we'll see that if we were to export an image or a rendering of this cube, it would not be there in that final rendering. Let's go ahead and click to turn that back on. When it comes to the camera or the light, that's a more difficult thing to figure out how that's going to work. And we'll cover all of that sort of stuff in a future set of lessons when we dig more into rendering and creating those images. So let's not worry about that for right now. Hey everyone, we're doing something a little unconventional here. And for a limited time, we're giving you access to one of our paid courses for free right here on YouTube. And this lesson is a part of it. Blender is a beast of a program to learn, but with the right approach, it doesn't have to be. That's why we created Blender Academy, to help people build the Blender skills they need and then go out and get the jobs they want. We hope you find these lessons to be a good investment of your time. If you do, and you're serious about learning Blender, head over to our website and continue learning with us. Thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe, and now, back to the lesson. Okay, another thing you can do here is you can name your collection. So let's say that we wanted a collection for shapes. Go ahead and double click on the name collection and type shapes and press the enter key on your keyboard. So now this collection, we think of it as shapes, 
but we only have the cube shape in here. We have the camera and the light, which maybe we don't think of as shapes. So we can add a new collection. Now, it matters where you are in the outliner hierarchy when you add a new collection. So here's what I mean by that. Go ahead and on the shapes collection name, go ahead and right click and pick the option for new. And you'll notice that it creates a new collection, but you can tell by the indentation, this collection is inside the shapes collection. And that would be fine. There might be reasons where you need to subdivide your file up into many sub collections, but that's not what we want to do right now. So if you ever create a collection that you don't want anymore, just right click on it and pick the option for delete. So that went away. We had right clicked on shapes and then got a sub collection, but what we really wanted was something that was at the level of scene collection. So go up to scene collection, right click on it and pick the option for new collection. And now you get it at the same level as the shapes collection. So it's not within it. For collection two, go ahead and double click it. And then let's rename this rendering and press enter. And we're gonna say that for this collection, we're gonna put any objects that have to do with our rendering in there. That would be the camera and the light. So the way to do that is to click and hold down and drag on camera until you hover over rendering and let go. And that drops it into the rendering collection. And then you can do the same with light. Click, hold down and drag it onto rendering and let go. And it'll drop it there. Now you have two different collections and you can think about the visibility for either relative to one another. So if you don't wanna see any of the rendering stuff, you could click on the eyeball icon next to the rendering collection. It gets rid of those elements from your viewport, but they're still there for later if you wanna turn them back on and then work with them. Go ahead and click on that eyeball icon to turn it back on. Let's say that we realize we've got some objects inside a collection and we think to ourselves, you know what? I think I'm gonna put these back in the original collection. I don't want this collection anymore. Well, just as before, you can delete this collection. So right click on the rendering collection and pick the option for delete. And instead of it deleting all of the objects that were within it, it just tosses those into the main scene collection space here. So that's handy to know that when you delete it, it won't delete all of the contents. Then you can just click, hold down and drag this into shapes and let go and click and hold down and drag this into shapes and let go. So in general, the outliner is a good place to observe the structure of your file. And again, there are some elements here that we haven't discussed yet. We will discuss it over the course of the upcoming lessons. So you'll get more about what I mean about being able to inspect how your file is constructed. You can also name things to make it easier as you add more and more objects to figure out what's what. You can organize them, you can hide them. One thing you can't do, let's say that you had more shapes in here. So let's go ahead and add an additional mesh. Hold down shift and press the letter A and then in the add menu, let's go to the mesh item for cylinder and add a cylinder here. And you'll notice the cylinder is added here. You'll notice that the cylinder was added depending on which hierarchy you were at here. So if I click to the left of shapes here to fold this up, the cylinder was not added inside the shapes collection because I was at the scene collection level when I added it. So I'll click to drop this back down again. I can see what's underneath it. If you want the cylinder inside the shapes collection, again, you just click, hold down and drag it and let go on the name shapes and now it's in there. Now I was mentioning one thing you cannot do with collections. Let's say you wanted to transform the cube and the cylinder together. Maybe you wanna move them together or you want to scale them or rotate them together. You can't merely click on the shapes collection and now try to do some sort of transformation on the collection. That's not possible. So even though the collection seems like we've got these objects in here and in a way it might feel like they're grouped together. If you're familiar with other programs where you can group things and then manipulate them together, this is not how the collections work here. They're merely more of a data structure. 
So there's no transforming these things together. We will cover in an upcoming lesson how you can think about transforming things together. So we will be able to accomplish what we want, but right now it's just not possible at the collection level to transform it. Of course, we could select the cube, hold down shift, and select the cylinder here, and then press G on your keyboard and move them together this way. But there's also some more powerful ways to group them together, and we'll talk about that in an upcoming lesson. So for right now, it's a very cursory overview of what we have going on here in the outliner. And in the upcoming lessons, we're going to cover a few strategies for working with multiple objects. And along the way, we'll refer back to and expand on our knowledge about what's going on in the outliner and how to take advantage of it as you're continuing to progress in Blender. Congratulations, you made it through the lesson. Did you find this video to be helpful? Let us know by giving it a like. If you're ready for the next lesson, you can find it in this playlist. And if you're interested in learning more about how we can help you build the skills you need, head over to blenderacademy.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, happy blending.